Hi. So I just came back from school and um just came back from school and it is very like humid. I want it to rain so that the humidity can go away. I'm over it. I don't like it. Anyway, uh, today is Monday, it's July 14th, and Booktubeathon is here! Whoop, whoop, whoop. This is not a Booktubeathon video though, this is a pre Booktubeathon review. Uh, so, this book, this video, is focused on this book, which I finished on Saturday. And it is Curtsies and Conspiracies by K Gail Carriger. I keep trying to say Kale Garriger. Uh, Curtsies and Conspiracies is a book two in Gail Carriger's Finishing School series, which is a YA young adult series. And I thoroughly enjoyed this book. I was was impressed by how it kind of suits all of my fancies. There's a little bit of action, there's a little bit of mystery, there's a little bit of romance, and there is a little bit of a proper society. I don't know. I, have, I enjoy, I enjoy Edwardian and Victorian time books. Uh, I enjoy them. So, uh, that being said, this, as, um, as I said, this is the second book in the Finishing School series. This series centers around Sophronia, or Sophronia, I say Sophronia, or Sophie in my head, but in this book she is lovingly called Rhea by young Mr. Felix Mercy, but we'll get to him in a minute. Uh, so Sophie, she is now attending Mademoiselle Geraldine's Finishing Academy for young ladies of quality. And this finishing school is not your typical finishing school in the fact that the young ladies who are attending are actually training to become the English version of CIA spies for us. And so they they go into society prim, proper, properly finished, but with a lot of tricks up their sleeves to get information and uh, just help to further the crown's cause. Uh, so there's Sophronia. There are her teachers like Lady Lizette, Mademoiselle Geraldine, Professor Lefeu, and Professor Braithwaite, and for Captain Neil or Niall, Captain Neil, I say. Her best friend is named Dimity. Dimity. And she is adorable. She is not really attending the finishing school because she wants to be an intelligencer. She is attending the school because Mama and Papa told her to. It is the thing that they do because her Mama is indeed an intelligencer. And her father came from their brother's school, Bunsen's, which is a school for evil geniuses. So, yeah. <laughs> Dimity's brother's name is Pillover, and Pillover is kind of, he's a dud in the sense that he is not quite living up to his papa's expectations, but I feel like he is still a very good character. He probably has a lot of untapped potential being squashed by fear and rejection, um, which is unfortunate, and something that I think everybody can relate to. We also have other background characters like Vive, who is Professor Lefou's Lefou? Professor Lefou, I think is how you say it. Professor Lefou's niece, who parades around the dirigible, which is the flying airship. So Vive parades around the dirigible dressed like a little boy, but she is quite knowledgeable in all things feminine, and she uh, takes to tinkering versus being proper. So, part of this plotline, the plotline in this book, is Sophie and Vive trying to get a teacher from Bunsen's sacked, get rid of him, so that Vive can attend Bunsen's with nobody except for Pillover knowing that she is a girl, not a boy. So, through most of the book, Sof Sophronia, Sophie, is trying to 
figure out a way to make this teacher's character less than what it is. She is attempting a character assassination. And what, what kind of worries me is how well she does it, considering that she has not had any classes on the subject. She is just going off of her senses and what she thinks would make sense. And that's one thing that I like and worries me about Sophie. She is very quick on her feet. She is so intelligent. She puts together deductions. She's always thinking of puzzles and what could this mean and what is this? And so she is quite fit for this job as an intelligencer. And a thing that I really appreciated about that particular plot line for Sophie is that when she succeeds with this scheme of hers, she has to deal with the consequences and then possible sub-consequences that come along with doing something as major as destroying somebody's character. I think that is wonderful because that's a thing that girls do. Well, men too, of course, but I mean, being a girl, I know that girls do it a lot. And so I really appreciated how she has to deal with that regret and that wonder of, is this extra point something that I caused because of my scheming? So in this book, we find our girls and our finishing school not only headed toward London for a coming out ball for one of the students, Monique, but we also find ourselves being joined together with boys, Bunsen boys. And Sophie, she is beautiful, but she doesn't quite understand how beautiful she is, which is probably good considering she's still young. I believe she's 13 or 14 at this point. Uh, so it's good that she doesn't realize quite the effect that she has on the young gentleman. Uh, but there is one young gentleman, Lord Mercy, or Felix, who is quite smitten with her and she doesn't quite know what to do with him. And I find that adorable and kind of sad. There's also another young man named Soap who is a sooty. So he works in the coal... with the coal furnaces. He keeps the... He keeps the dirigible up and floating, but he is also ranked very much below her. He is a common working class young man. So there's that class problem that Sophie has to kind of deal with and she finds herself wondering if she's feeling more than she properly should be for the young man. And I like, I like soap, so I feel kind of bad for him. Um, this book, we deal a lot more with vampires and where, well, more with vampires. Uh, and that's another thing I like about steampunk is there's just, well, so far in the steampunk that I've read, there is just enough of like supernatural stuff, like vampires, werewolves, ghosts, that I'm like, oh, that's adorably cheesy, but I'm not like, dude, y'all creepy. So thank you, Gail, for not going overboard. <laughs> um, but yeah, so we're dealing with vampires and there is a vampire that we are, his name. Let me get his name first. There's a vampire, and there's a vampire that we're introduced to like in the last 100 pages. A vampire named Lorda Keldema that we are introduced to in the last 100 pages or so of the book, and he's eccentric. He is funny. I I really enjoyed his presence. I cannot wait for his for him to be in the next book. I'm hoping. And I really just want to know what is in that note that she got at the end of the book. I don't know why I said that like that. So, honorable mentions in this book are Bumbersnoot, who is Sophie's mechanical animal, or mechanimal. And he's, I can just imagine him being adorable and just being so precious. She disguises him as her little purse and he he's great and convenient if you want to destroy letters that are not proper and you don't want anybody and you don't want anybody else to read uh, there's also captain neil we got a little bit more of captain neil in this book he is a good captain never leave a man behind 
he is um, a werewolf. And so, yeah. I would have given it 4.5 stars, but because I was laughing and I was giggling and I almost cried at one point, I think, and. Uh, but I only give it four stars because it took me four tries <laughs> to get through the book. Um, so, and I don't think that's necessarily Gail's fault. I just wasn't in the mood for steampunk. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Um, so with that, that is all for this review. Uh, now on to booktube with stuff. <laughs>